Hey guys, it's Yanni here. Welcome back to our channel. Today's video is going to be a lot of errands and running around the city to do a lot of medical and insurance for our travel. If you're new here, we are traveling the world for a year next year in 2020, starting January. And just like any other travelers, before traveling outside your country, you should get a lot of vaccination to protect yourselves from viruses and diseases in each country that you're going to be going to. And for us, we are literally going to be traveling most countries in every single part of the world, mostly in Asia, Europe, Africa, and Middle east we're gonna save latin america in 2021 surprise <laughs> so we're not gonna be coming back to toronto to all my friends who's watching this we're not gonna be coming back until 2020 two maybe or half 2021 so today i have an appointment with a travel medical clinic who knew that there was a travel medical clinic i didn't know about this hopefully this video is very informative for anyone who's traveling and hopefully this will inform you what are the requirements that you need to take and all the appointments that you need to book before going on your trip later today as well we're gonna go to the ohip office so what i'm gonna be doing in that office is i'm just gonna go in and let them know that i'm gonna be traveling for a year because apparently ohip only covers up to 6.9 months 212 days to be exact they're only gonna cover you for 212 days and beyond that you're not gonna be covered under any insurance so you would have to cover yourself and all that so we're gonna i'm gonna tell you everything later in this video so just keep on watching by the way fabio will be joining us later he is just going to his yoga class right now and he's gonna be joining me at the medical clinic my appointment is at 2 and his appointment is at 2 30 so we're gonna be crossing path somehow so i have my documents ready it's all in the bag hopefully i didn't forget anything so let's go Before going to this travel clinic, I went to my family doctor first and she's actually the one who advised me that there is a travel clinic. Your family doctor will give you the Hep A and the Hep B, all the basic shots, but for the travel clinic, they're more specialized in the country like viruses like Zika virus, H1N1 and all that. So must go. Although I still don't know what type of vaccination I'm going to get, so we'll find that out together today when we go to the travel clinic. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> Well, I just thought making this video would be helpful for people as well who are traveling and you know, you really need to secure your health first. By the way, I was advised that there is a charge for the first visit. I don't exactly know how much, but I think it's around 60 to $70 and it's not covered in any insurance. However, some shots that they're gonna give you later on is gonna be covered by insurance. Just something to keep in mind. It's hard to walk while it's cold. I'm out of breath and it's cold. I'm so shy vlogging in public. Can you believe it? Two years on YouTube and I'm so shy. Okay, thank you. Okay guys, I'm here. Fabio's supposed to be here as well, so let's find him. Oh, very nice place. <gasps> Fabio! Fabio's here. Hi guys! Exciting! I know. Wow. Alright guys, we're here. So we're just gonna fill out this paper form. I just came from class, that's why I'm not very presentable today. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> so guys, we don't know how much we can film inside, but we'll try to record it secretly if we can, and we'll take you with us, and definitely we'll tell you everything that you need to expect destination what am i gonna put that's what i'm saying they ask us for destination what is it everywhere <laughs> destination world they asked me on the phone too like where are you gonna be traveling to i said the world Southeast Asia. Yes. When? Um, we're starting in January. January of 2020. <clears throat> 2020. Okay. Yeah. We're also going to some Middle Eastern country. I'm not sure if that's part like, of Europe as well, like Turkey. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Northern Africa as well, like Egypt, Morocco, yeah. those places. Okay. 
and obviously Eastern Europe as well. So if you get a bite, you need a moon globulin into the bite site plus five rabies shots. If you do three rabies shots before departure, you still need two shots post exposure after a bite, mm. but that's it, two shots, not five and immune globulin. So it's recommended for long kinds of trips, like you guys are just going backpacking around the world, right? Yeah. yeah. So you, in my opinion, would want rabies, but I can understand why you wouldn't want to do it if you're not covered, mm -hmm. but I recommend rabies. The other thing is Japanese encephalitis. Japanese encephalitis is a viral disease from a mosquito that bites at night in rural Southeast Asia, mostly from April to October. Yeah. So you're there from April, May, and then and June, June you're leaving, yeah. right? So you're January, February, March, low season, but April, May, higher season. Very rare disease, okay. about one in a million. It's never been diagnosed in a Canadian traveler that I know of. Okay. There's probably been 36 cases in the United States in 36 years. Mm -hmm. um, so it's rare, mm -hmm. but of the people who have had Japanese encephalitis, there have been deaths. So Japanese encephalitis is like West Nile virus, mm -hmm. which we have here in Toronto. If you get it, you know, most people don't even know they're sick. They get a bit of a cold and life goes on. Other people get it, they get sick, they get better. And then other people get it and they die. But the people who die, it's rare. So that vaccine's 220-ish dollars mm -hmm. a dose. You need two of those mm -hmm. in a schedule um, of either seven days apart or 28 days apart. So you have time for that as well. Mm -hmm. Rabies is over 28 days. The typhoid's easy. It's from typhoid fever. It's not expensive. It's a one shot. It lasts you for three years and that's a disease mm -hmm. from food and water. So you should have that. Okay. Polio, yeah, sure. I don't even know if we charge for polio. It's not that expensive and that you should have because of all the changes in the polio laws around the, okay. around the globe. Uh, recently, when I, because I researched online about mm -hmm. that and it was not, it, it wasn't, it didn't come up. Anywhere in the countries that no. you're going? Are you in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's totally recommended. Oh, is it? it so okay, the, perfect. Let's just so do that. So I'll just tell you the problem. It, it's it's just we don't know what's happening because of the because of the change. So if of you look, course. let's look at the Philippines. Yeah. And Indonesia is the same. But if you look at the Philippines, the new guidelines for polio recommended for all travelers adequate primary series and one adult dose. And the WHO has exit recommendations. All travelers and residents who stay more than four weeks should be encouraged to receive a dose of polio within one year prior to departure from the Philippines. Right. So a lot of countries, including Philippines, Indonesia, most of Africa are saying you can't leave our country if you've been here for four weeks because right. we don't want you taking polio out of our country to another country for but anywhere you're right. going right now there is zero required oh, okay so they won't check our papers or they won't check your papers for anything except potentially polio okay yeah. No, on mine, no, yeah, for sure. Probably you, you have it because you were born there. I was born in the Philippines. No, but you so need an adult dose. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you, you came here when right. you were younger, right? Are some of the shots covered with some insurance? or? Yeah. Okay. But I don't know. So everybody has to check. It depends who your insurer is. Okay. Like if you wanted to do, so I would just say at a minimum for vaccine, you should have a polio and a typhoid. Yeah. And then if you want to go home and check insurance, then I would consider Japanese encephalitis and rabies. Okay, yeah. And then good. if I had to pick one over the other, I'd probably pick Japanese encephalitis because rabies, you can still do something after you get yeah. it. Whereas right. Japanese encephalitis, if you get it, you get it. But the flip side is, it's more common, I think, to get rabies than it is to get a dog bite For or sure. a bat bite or a monkey bite than it is to get Japanese encephalitis. It's mm -hmm. so hard to decide. Mm -hmm. I think if I could vaccinate everybody with everything, I would. But those are your current issues. So. Yeah. The if, other yeah. issue is malaria, because you need to take malaria pills when you go in and out of malaria lands. So there's, okay, I need to sort of have an idea of where you're going in Southeast Asia. Sure. We have a itinerary. We could pull that out for yeah, you. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Tell me where you're going. Yeah. So um, do you want to look at the sheets? But yeah, I'm open to getting most, if not all, shots if they're pretty covered. much covered yeah i think we have a pretty good insurance good, as well yeah, so. Check. so do you want me to just name the countries yeah. okay so we're going to we have a layover in hong kong yep. um thailand so chiang mai chiang rai phuket bangkok Done. no malaria oh wow you you know everything <laughs> 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 um we are also going to myanmar okay malaria everywhere except rangon like, i'm going I... to my town called the polog i'm not sure if that's how do you spell it d-i-b P O D I P O L O G L O G. 
Yeah. Ooh, malaria. Yeah, malaria. Okay then. And I was there December, but I was uh, last year September. I was fine. Yeah, I know. So this thing yeah. is like it's a numbers game, and you could choose not to take malaria, but you're in malaria land. If you're one of ten percent of people, you go from zero to a hundred sick very fast, and you can get um, cerebral malaria, which you basically have a high chance of death. The average person gets a high fever, shakes, chills, and they start to get unwell, and then you go to the doctor and they diagnose you with malaria and put you on pills and they okay. treat you so you can take so it's yes, an option you get it so the other thing i could do is i can give you self-treatment like i can give you canadian pills like four pills a day for three days to take in a case of emergency so that's an option will... because the other place that you're going to so palawan is the same like some people take pills some people don't take pills but mm. those are the only two areas of risk if we do decide to go to south africa or some african countries Kruger National Park is the, oh, then you have to start the whole thing. So my suggestion if you're doing that is just visit another clinic in a year from now in Europe and just your shots will be up to date and then you can reassess yeah. risk. Because I'm from there so I can, I have a family doctor there as well. Yeah, and there's travel clinics everywhere. So, will bug spray help with mar malaria as well? Or? It does in the night, sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Bug spray from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep. And if you're sleeping in um, your home and there's no, uh, like most people have a routine, right? You, yeah. Like ideally, in your if you're in an area where there's malaria transmission, you need to sleep under a net so that the mosquitoes yeah. aren't biting you, right? And that's pretty common in most of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Our house in the Philippines is pretty covered too. Like that's the first prevention of all most people right? in my country. That's probably yeah. why my family don't get malaria because our house are covered with nets everywhere. Right, and oh, that's how it should goodness. be. Are there any side effects for this malaria pills? Because like, you know, I'm gonna say yes because there's always potential, but most people are fine with malaria pills. Plus, you're not gonna take them all that long right yeah. like even if you took them the whole time you're in the philippines it's like four weeks right people are taking these things for like six months at a time mm -hmm. depending on where they're going right yeah and you think that having the the ladder that you said not the prevention one like the four the self pills. treatment it all yeah. depends on your comfort level right like okay. are you comfortable if so you know it all depends on the health care of yeah. your village of where you are <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you got all that. <laughs> it's a lot. We tried to record as much as we can, pretty much the whole conversation. Yeah. But during editing, I'm gonna cut down and leave the information that's the most important part. Yes, so <laughs> now our arms are sore, but yeah. at least we're ready to go. We paid about 320 yes. something dollars for both of us, so one. one 60 each or something like that and so we got two shots today we got the polio yes and, and typhoid. typhoid fever yes so yes like we said we got two shots today the polio the typhoid fever typhoid <laughs> typhoid fever <laughs> we just don't know if it's covered by insurance and we booked another appointment for next week to get rabies Rabies, uh, rabies, Japanese shock. something, Japanese encephalitis, 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 Japanese enchiladas, enchiladas, <laughs> tacos, sushi, sashimi, all that. So we're gonna check with the insurance first we, because yeah. those are are so expensive. They're yes. six hundred dollars just for the rabies. Shots. So we didn't book the appointment yet because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna call the insurance if it's gonna be covered. Um, if it's gonna be covered, we're gonna get all the shots as possible before we fly obviously it's yeah. good to be safe than never so the rabies shots the reason why it's so expensive six hundred dollars is because you need actually three shots two hundred dollars each plus if you get bitten by a, don a donkey <laughs> a donkey a sorry a dog or a monkey a donkey yes it's a donkey even though you have the vaccination you still need two extra to get cured and yeah. you get them in the place where you are right yes there. so uh, the other one apparently japanese something encephalitis. encephalitis um that one is very dangerous as well so if it's covered yeah. we're literally gonna get that and the last one is malaria that one is taken by pills but yeah. what you have two options for that either you take the prevention or the aftercare so the aftercare is when you get bitten by mosquito and you do get mal and if you do get malaria knock on the wood that's yes. when you take the pills yeah. and cure yourself. Uh, and I think it's 
for uh, for four days. For you four have days, to take yeah. Them. But if you want the prevention, that means that you have to take, take the feel every, every single, single day. day you're in these places. Yes. So. We said all this information we didn't know about, right? Know. It's so helpful. So, so that's said, why I hope this video is help people as well out there. Yeah. So to the doctor we said we're just gonna do the um, cure. The so cure. In yeah. Case we get it. We're gonna do as best as we can to yes. get. So, so now we're gonna grab lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't eaten yet, and it's three o'clock. Yeah. And then we have to go to Ohip, Ohip and talk which to them. is our health healthcare here yeah. in Canada. Then we have to talk to them about the fact that we're living and how to deal with that yes okay we're gonna update you later i hope this video is very helpful see you later let us know if you have any questions about it because now we know quite a bit after this yeah this she's so knowledgeable here we are last time i was here there was three hours and a half lineup and doesn't look better this time we might have to come back so we finally after two hours two hours yeah we finally made it also through social insurance and all that. So now we're covered until January. And then when we come back, we're gonna have a different coverage. So we're, we're covered, good to go. We're covered right before we leave. And when we come back, we just have to come back here again, line up again, and re re so reactivate. Two hours. But apparently once you do this, you're good to travel outside the country for two years. Yeah, so. which is good. Yeah. Now we're heading home to have some wine, dinner, and then we're gonna relax. That's it. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this video is very informative. This was a very long day for us. I hope you guys learned something from this video, requirements and tips and things like that. So let us know if you have any other questions, we can help you. Obviously, this is all related to Canada, so if you're from a different country, that may be a bit different. Google is your friend. Bye, guys.